Hello, my name's Paula. I've made between 10 and 20 Roman blinds in my time so far. I'm just about to make another one. The first one probably took me about a year. Um, since then, I have researched online, read books and all sorts to try and work out the, 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 the right way to make a Roman blind. And as a result of all my research, discovered that there are lots of different ways to make Roman blinds. Um, some are more onerous than others, some are quite quick. So I thought I would just do a quick video on what the differences are and what the different styles are and to assure people that there isn't a right or wrong way to, to make one. And then what I'll do is I'll run round and show a few blinds that I've made to demonstrate what the differences are that I've talked about. You will firstly probably make a blind either to fit within the recess of a window or you will have it overlap the window itself so that it comes like a curtain either side. Pros and cons to both. Um, if it recesses, then you've got room to have curtains on the outside of it if you like, and you can keep the blind up and pull curtains, or you can pull the blind down and keep the curtains open. Um, if you have it on the outside of the recess, then you really only have room for one curtain dressing. Depends on the style of your house, really. Um, another um, biggie is do you interline your Roman blind or do you not? Now, there's a very famous high street um, design company that interlines all of their blinds. The go-to book on curtain making, which says you never use interlining in your Roman blind. It's a personal choice and it's up to you. Um, for your first blind, probably using an interlining between the two fabrics that you're going to use might add further complications, might give you more room for error, so perhaps more of an advanced um, Thing to do. Um, you can also use blackout lining on the in, as the lining. Um, that, that's really, really effective for keeping too much sun out. Um, the next one is whether you go um, on the hand sewn approach or you use your sewing machine as much as possible. I'd say it depends um, on the finish that you're looking for. Uh, how traditional you want them to look, but you can use either. One thing that dictates whether you use uh, hand sewing or a machine is whether you sew your own rod pockets into the back of your lining fabric um, or whether you sew a rod pocket tape onto your fabric. Those kind of dictate how much of the of the machine sewing or stitches are visible on the front of the blind. Also, sometimes it doesn't really matter if your blind is going to sit predominantly in the up position. Then, whether you've machine sewed your blind or hand sewn it, you probably won't see those stitches anyway. Um, another thing is, if you use rod pockets. Um, and you sew them in yourself, then you'll be hand sewing all the rings on the back, um, which can add up to being 16, 20 of these little rings, all hand sewn. Quite a laborious job, whereas if you use the tape and you machine sew that on, then you just run your, your strings, your vertical strings, through the, the, the little holes in there, so that saves a lot of work. Winding mechanisms. Traditionally, you would use a batten piece of wood screwed onto the wall with some eyelets at regular, um, regular distances screwed in, and then you run your own stringing system and pull it up the side. Sounds complicated, but actually it, it isn't really. Um, the advantage of that is probably a lot cheaper, um, and also you're pulling up and down of the blind is a lot quicker whereas when you use the more modern mechanical winders you do end up pulling like you're pulling a sail up on a ship there's quite a lot of pulling to to get there's there's two types of mechanical winders one is where you have a rotary uh, bar and you pull a chain at the side similar to the uh, wooden batten but it's all pre-strung for you um, including a, a knob on the end of your string. So all you have to do is run the, the pre-strung strings through your blind um, when you finished it. Um, advantage of that is you don't have to work out the stringing um, routes. The next one is uh, when you conduct your measurements, you can have your blind positioned so that it's actually, if you're having it on the outside of your window, 
not in the recess, you can actually position it quite a lot higher than the window um, opening so that then when you pull the blind up, all the fabric sits quite nicely just above the opening of the window. So it then lets a lot of light through. As well as having different ways of making um, blinds, there are things in common in that whichever approach you use, you will use a batten across the bottom of your blind, whether it's made of plastic, fiberglass, or a bit of wood, as long as it's quite flat. That weights the blind and helps it to lay flat. You also may, well, will generally have um, thin fiberglass type rods that run across each of the folds. These help to spread the weight of the fabric so that when you pull the blind up, it comes up evenly. It's more important for wider blinds and I'm particularly in a house like mine where it's the 70s wide window and you're making quite wide blinds, then these poles are really quite important for that. You always need lots of string, lots of fine nylon string. You always need some kind of mechanism at the top. There's plenty of online tools. If you Google Roman blind fold distances, where you put in the size of your blind and it will tell you all the cuts and what size each fold should be. But you need to be careful that you know what style of blind you're using, whether you're sewing on tape or you're sewing your own rod pocket. These are just some of the things I have discovered when making Roman blinds. There are many more areas to discuss, but I hope that this has been helpful as an introduction. I hope you can join me in my next video when I will be making this pink gingham machine sewn blind with a triangle ruffle trim. Thanks for watching.